In this lecture, we're going to discuss a concept known as capacitive reactants, which, is such, which essentially exists across capacitors which are placed into AC circuits. So let's begin by recalling what takes place when we take a capacitor and place it into a circuit that contains a battery. A battery is essentially a source of direct current, a current that remains constant and and does not change over time. So once we place the following capacitor into our circuit that contains a battery and we close the switch, an electric current begins to flow. And that's because there is initially a voltage difference between the capacitor and our battery. So as our current flows, charge begins to accumulate on these plates of our parallel plate capacitor. And eventually, when the charge accumulates, the voltage voltage difference across the capacitor will be the same as the voltage difference across the battery. And in that moment in time, no more current will flow because there will be no voltage difference inside our uh, DC circuit. So once again, inside a DC circuit, once we close the switch, the plates of the capacitor will quickly acquire charge. Now when the voltage difference on the capacitor equals to the voltage difference on the battery, current stops flowing. Now let's compare a slightly different situation. Let's suppose we replace our battery with an alternating current source. So a voltage source that continually changes. So in an AC circuit, when we close the following switch, charge begins to accumulate on both plates. So we have equal and opposite charge. Now when the voltage inside our alternating current source reverses, the current inside the wire will also flow in the opposite direction. And that means the charge on the plates will also reverse. So therefore, inside an alternating current circuit with the capacitor as shown in the following diagram, the current will continuously flow because the voltage across the plates of our capacitor will continually change. So let's answer the following question. How exactly does the voltage across our capacitor inside the following AC circuit vary with respect to time? So let's begin by looking at the following electric circuit that contains an alternating current source and a capacitor. And let's apply Kirchhoff's second rule. So Kirchhoff's second rule, also known as Kirchhoff's loop rule, essentially states that if we begin at some position 1 and go around the circuit and end up back at position 1, the sum of the voltage differences across our devices will equal to 0. So, let's begin at position 1 and let's suppose we follow our current from position 1 all the way to position 2. So as we cross the following AC source, there is an increase in voltage given by the voltage that exists inside this device. So let's represent that with uppercase V. So we have positive V. Now when we go from 2 back to 1, there is a decrease in voltage that is given by the voltage that exists across the plates of our capacitor given by Q divided by C. So V is equal to, or V minus Q divided by C is equal to 0. Now if we rearrange this equation, we see that the voltage at any given time across our capacitor is equal to the total charge Q across that capacitor divided by the capacitance. So let's label this equation as equation A. So we're going to use this equation in just a moment. So, what exactly is the total quantity of charge Q and how does this charge Q depend on time? So recall that the instantaneous electric current I is equal to the derivative of our charge. 
So I is equal to dq divided by dt. Now if we bring our dt to the left side, we see that the product of the current and our infinitely small change in time dt is equal to our infinitely small quantity of charge dq found on our capacitor. So now we essentially want to represent our Q in terms of time. So we see that the total charge on the capacitor is equal to the integral of dQ. So the total charge Q is equal to the integral dQ. Now from this relationship, we can represent our dQ as I multiplied by dT. Now recall in our discussion on alternating electric current circuits, the current inside an AC circuit is given by the following equation. So I, our instantaneous current, is equal to I naught, the P current, multiplied by cosine of omega multiplied by T. So we can essentially take this I and rewrite it using the following equation. And that's exactly what we do. So Q, the total quantity of charge across the capacitor, is equal to the integral of I naught cosine omega T multiplied by dT. Now if we actually solve the integral and we apply the chain rule, we get the following result. So Q is equal to I naught sine omega T divided by omega where our omega comes from the chain rule. Now, let's actually combine this equation and equation A. So the voltage is equal to, or the voltage across our plates of the capacitor is equal to the total charge on the plates of the capacitor divided by the capacitance, where Q is equal to the following equation. So remember, our goal in this step was essentially to represent our charge Q in terms of time. So we see by equation A, the voltage is equal to I naught sine omega T divided by omega multiplied by C. Now let's apply an important trigonometric function. Recall that the sine of any angle theta is equal to the cosine of that angle theta minus 90 degrees. So let's represent our sine of the angle omega times T as cosine of the angle omega times t minus 90 degrees. So let's bring our omega c to this side and we see that the voltage is equal to I naught divided by omega times c multiplied by the cosine of the angle omega t minus 90 degrees. Now this entire ratio is simply the peak voltage. So the voltage is equal to V naught times cosine of omega t minus 90 degrees. So once again, notice that V naught is equal to I naught divided by omega times c, and this is known as our peak voltage. It's the highest possible voltage that exists across our capacitor. Now, if we compare the following equation, so this equation gives us the electric current inside our circuit, and this equation, which gives us the voltage across our capacitor, we can conclude that the voltage lags behind our electric current by 90 degrees. So, now let's define what capacitive reactance is. So, capacitive reactance is the resistance that exists inside a capacitor as a result of the voltage that exists across our capacitor that is given by the following equation. Now, we define the capacitance by the following equation. So, our peak voltage is equal to the peak current multiplied by the capacitive reactance given by X 
with the C superscript. That stands for our capacitance. Now, if we go back to the following equation, we see that our V naught is equal to I naught divided by omega multiplied by C. So we see that our capacitive reactance XC is equal to 1 divided by omega multiplied by C, where omega is the angular frequency and C is our capacitance. So we see that our capacitive reactance is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi multiplied by the frequency multiplied by our capacitance. Now if we wanted to, we can represent our peak voltage and peak current using the root mean square voltage and root mean square current. So the root mean square voltage is equal to the root mean square current multiplied by the capacitive reactance.